Hey guys, I'm Steve Harper. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Owner Insight, and I am grateful to be back here for the Owner Insight podcast. If you've been tuning in, our last few months of podcasts have been off the hook. We appreciate the listening that you've been doing, the sharing. Uh, there's so many good conversations that have been coming out of these podcasts. I, I can't begin to tell you. We do these podcasts not only for our clients and our stakeholders that utilize our platform, but we really do it as a resource for the entire construction industry. And based on the traffic and the interest that we've had relative to the episodes that we've done as of late, uh, it seems like we are really resonating. So I wanted to personally jump on here and thank you. It's been a few months since I've actually done my own podcast episode. So it's just me today. I hope you don't mind. But I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Number one, I want to talk about the theme that we're focused on in the month of June and probably July, which is about mitigating risk, which is what Owner Insight is all about especially as it relates to the owners, right? One of the key factors that we run into is that owners often don't realize that they need their own software to manage and control the data that goes into their projects. Track and manage and understand the communication that's happening amongst the construction team. And to ensure they walk away with a solid closeout process and a memorialization of all the project data. Because, hey, let's face it, sometimes things happen, defects arise, Issues uh, resulting in what was done on the project can bubble up six months or six years after a project is concluded. And you need that data and that information to protect your interest as an owner. And it is a paradigm shift in a big way for the industry because a lot of owners default to the tools of the trade, i.e. the software that the architect and engineer may use or tools that their GC have talked them into utilizing and their subs, uh, you know, if they're using software of any kind, uh, it's usually, you know, something that the owner doesn't even see. And a lot of times that arm link distance away from the information doesn't get a clear, doesn't give a clear and unfettered access and, and, and true picture of what's going on with the projects. We believe Owner Insight serves this purpose, does it very well, makes it super easy for an owner to roll this out. And because we offer this software with no additional cost, unlimited users, uh, unlimited training and support for all the stakeholders on the project, we make it a no-brainer to implement this on a project because not only are you walking away as an owner with all your documentation and all your data, all the critical information that you need in order to not only have a proper accounting of what's gone on throughout the project, but ultimately have that great memorialization of the project in the project archive at the conclusion of the project because you never know when you're going to come back and need that information at some point. So that is a big factor. But like I said, one of the things that we're really committed to doing is helping those owners understand and mitigate the risks. So we're going to dive into that here in just a little bit more detail here in just a few minutes. But before I do that, I wanted to point out a couple of things. If you haven't been to ownerinsight.com, I'd encourage you to do it. It's owner dash, the little hyphen, insight spelled I-N-S-I-T-E dot com. If you haven't been there, we actually put this website together, uh, relaunched it actually end of last year. And we really built it to give a clearer picture of what we do as a software. But more importantly than that is to be a resource, much like what we're doing on these podcast episodes. We want to put great information out, whether we're working with you as a client of ours or not. We believe that it's our commitment and our obligation to bring awareness to key topics that maybe the industry in general is not necessarily talking about or potentially hasn't really illuminated on too much. And we feel like we have a responsibility to help. And because of that, we are getting you know clients that we work with, whether it be school districts, whether it be municipalities, whether it be, uh, you know, we, we're, we're working with a, a wide variety of healthcare, private enterprise, mixed use developers, and of course, a lot of owners and owners reps that are developing their own projects. We're very, very committed to trying to be a resource and, and provide value, whether you're paying us to do so or not. And so one of the things that we do, if you go to owner-insight.com, under our resources tab, a couple of things I want to make sure that you're aware of. One, we have a phenomenal blog. My team just absolutely rocks. My team is phenomenal. We come up with topics and subjects that really, really matter. And we have some great article content that's up there. In fact, actually our last three posts, just so you have an idea, 
using the right construction management software for owners. Well, we're talking about that now. Obviously, that's a little bit of a plug as to why an owner-focused software is critical and important. Whether it's ours or someone else's, if you're an owner, you need it, right? Um, we also talked about what was happening here in the Texas elections with regards to school bonds. Um, we had done a post last November and it was pretty shocking. It was historical low turnout in a number of uh, schools that have always been accustomed to passing bonds with no problem. We're starting to uh, recognize that the voter trust was waning just a bit. And so they had um, some very surprising uh, defeats at the ballot box. And so we did a follow-up post for our May elections, May 2022, and there's a slight improvement. We've got a good, good article on that. You might want to just check it out just to kind of see because there are a lot of factors that are, are weighing there for our school leaders as to how they effectively renovate, you know, focus their efforts on, on you know, what their maintenance priorities are, how to expand some of their campus footprints, whether it be through additions to existing campuses or evaluating some of those older facilities, whether they knock it down and build if that's more cost effective. And ultimately what, you know, they need in terms of their geographic footprint, if they're growing and the demographics show that they need additional schools, you know, they need to be able to have justification for that. And so the blog is really good, you know, sort of understanding of what the voter mentality and, and appetite is right now for those things. And that, of course, ties into a lot of the things that we do. We're not just a construction project management software. We have a planning tool that we help school districts identify what their specific needs are, formulate a game plan when they need to take it to bond, uh, take it out to the taxpayers for a bond election, and ultimately be able to help those, whether you're successful at the ballot box or not, be able to uh, you know, start the war from here, so to speak. Really, at the end of the day, it's about those, the needs never, <laughs> they never stop. They never end. They're just continually changing and evolving. And whether you've gotten the voter approval at the ballot box or not, uh, you still have to contend with these things. So how do you reprioritize? So we, we touch a little bit on that, but that's just a, a little bit of insight for you as to you know, some of the things that we're thinking about. And then we also um, you know, had uh, a really interesting article about, hey, your bond didn't pass. Now, you know, what, what's next, right? What, what, what do you do now? And so I just you know, wanted to point those out. We've got ones on you know, construction risk, you know, what happens when your projects, you know, you know, suffer because there's a failure to communicate with project teams, generally because not everybody is singing out of the same hymnal, right? Because there's not an owner-focused software at play like Owner Insight. And just a whole plethora of article content that we've done that really provides strong value. I encourage you to go check out, look for under our resources tab, the blog. Um, the other thing that I wanted to make sure that you're aware of is that our podcast, all the episodes that we've done, I mentioned earlier, we've done some some really, really good content as of late. And one of the things that I'm most proud of is that we've been highlighting some very amazing women in construction. And we have two women uh, that come from school district backgrounds and they deal with construction day in and day out uh, for their, their districts. And we also focused uh, our energy around one of our healthcare clients that we work with um, and just some really phenomenal insights for women that are considering construction as a potential career path or uh, for those of you that are sort of understanding how are the nuances of these construction teams adapting and changing and, and you know, ultimately where a lot of these construction professionals, these ladies that have really been put in their time and have such vast experience where they're seeing the shifts and adjustments that need to be made, not only in the team dynamics and how everybody gets along, but how we have, you know, everybody gets on board and delivers the project the way it needs to be uh, without fail, right? On time, on budget, and uh, hopefully uh, with some cohesiveness amongst the project team, not just internally within the organizations, but across all the stakeholders. So each of these women brought some really, really amazing perspectives on these. And I'd highly encourage you to go check those podcasts out. We also talked about closeouts and sort of what Owner Insight is doing to sort of re-change that story and that description around that. Because one of the areas I want to talk about, about mitigating risks is owners don't think about that closeout process. And one of the challenges that you run into as an owner is as you get to that 80 to 85% completion rate, a lot of the big you know, assets that have gone into your build 
there are things that are going to be owed to you in terms of information, you know, specifications on your HVAC systems, what type of roofing system went in, uh, types of windows, carpet, tile, all the critical assets that go in that everybody is excited to have, right? At the end of the day, we just want to open the facility. And sometimes in that enthusiasm, we don't really pay close attention to how that closeout process is going. And I want to speak to the owner specifically because this is a big, big risk factor. And so, you know, we talk about this because it's very important that there is a proven process that everybody understands to ensure that as the owner closes out and pays off that final pay application uh, to buy out the contract, that they have the vast majority of everything that is owed to them. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, a lot of these teams that have been involved in your construction project, well, they're moving on to the next project, which means you're losing all those subject matter experts that were on your job site day in and day out and were aware of what was going on. They know the particulars, the information that is critical. And a lot of times they put a junior individual on uh, back on the project to sort of organize the information for closeout, which means you get a lot of mishmash of information that is not ideal. And it's certainly not valuable to you long term. And so there needs to be a proven process and an approach. We have kind of rethought the mousetrap, if you will, about how that process can work. And so we utilize that relative to the project closeout process, highly tied to our asset insight tool, which makes sure that you walk away with all the critical information that you need. You understand, you know, all the, you know, the, the specifics around what you as the owner are required to do for those key assets, what owner required services are out there, who to call if things don't go well, a way to document and track any uh, service events or challenges that you face during that warranty period, because that is a critical factor because, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't have that in a process, then you may be finding yourself paying for services that would otherwise be covered either by your GC warranty or potentially by the manufacturer warranty. Big, big risk. There was a study, and I, I may be misquoting the source here, so I'm just throwing it out there. I believe it was Johnson Controls had done one that said 30% of the construction value is lost at the handoff of closeout, right? 30%, which means there's a substantial amount of dollars at risk there as that project starts to cross the finish line. You can't leave that to chance. You need to make sure that you mitigate that risk, which you know, I've touched base on that a little bit and talked about it, but we, we cover that even, you know, close out is just the beginning. That's a podcast that we did uh, back in April. Go check it out. You know, be sure to, you know, to, you know, just getting, you know, on our podcast, subscribe. We're on Apple podcasts. We're on most podcast platforms. Uh, you know, just, you know, subscribe. You'll get a notification every time we put out a new episode like this, right? So just, Kind of coming back to the theme of why we're talking about mitigation risk, uh, mitigating risk in the in the month of June and July is we're going to actually be speaking to a lot of smaller school districts. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to uh, present at the Texas, um, you know, rural school uh, conference later this month. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about, well, it's going to be uh, sort of a uh, sort of a panel discussion between, you know, facilitated by me but with a construction litigator that has seen the best and the worst of environments, as well as a former superintendent that uh, inherited a project as he was taking over his leadership role with the school district. And the thing that was, um, you know, really interesting about putting this panel together is how everybody sort of comes around having uh, a, an approach and an understanding that if I just had more information, uh, things may not have gotten off track or, you know, relying on a handshake deal or communication via, you know, just, you know, hey, that's what so-and-so said. So that's what we did. Uh, it doesn't work and it's not a good idea. And so a lot of school districts, doesn't matter the size, large, you know, medium or small, they all find themselves at a very um, uh, sort of challenging crossroads in how they manage both time and resources because they're they're challenged in both, Right. And you're hoping and praying that your projects are going to be done and done correctly, but oftentimes that's not the case. And even if they are done correctly, sometimes just because of the nature of what's happening relative to construction, uh, defects, you know, bubble up and you need to be able to have a process in place to ensure that you can properly defend your interests, you know, should you need to. 
And so I think a lot of owners, whether it be school districts or whether it be any type of commercial construction, really need to think about that. Had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with um, someone that is responsible for putting together hotels and always sort of left it to chance with the local GCs that they selected, the partners. They had a national uh, architect firm that they worked with, but a lot of the uh, you know, the heavy lifting for the project, uh, for lack of a better description, was left to that local GC and their team. And they ran into some issues and there was some miscommunication and there's some things that uh, were just flat out missed. All these things were so highly preventable because if they had had a tool and a resource like Owner Insight to ensure that everybody's on the same page, they're managing the communication in the process, well, that mitigates the risk of poor communication, or in this case, no communication. It mitigates the risk of assumptions being made by people that probably shouldn't be in that role to make those assumptions. And it also mitigates the risk of just um, lack of accountability. Who is responsible for what? And I think that that is a factor that a lot of owners really have to take a long, deep look at. You know, you're writing a you know, a couple of million dollar check to hundreds of millions of dollars of checks uh, relative to the project, depending on the size. That is not something you just put into the middle of the table and say, whew, I hope, I hope this is going to work. I hope it's going to go well. I'm going to hope and pray. Hope and pray is not a strategy. You have to look at where are my potential roadblocks? Where are my potential challenges? How do I make sure that I'm staying engaged and involved in the process? And even though I may not be the subject matter expert, I'm pretty good at figuring out when people miss deadlines or responses are slipping through the cracks. That's a generally a, a red flag of some sort. It helps identify that, you know, some things may be off track. And ultimately what we try and do through our software is to provide that owner the ability to ask more informed questions and to be able to avoid potentially small problems becoming big problems. That's our, that's our commitment. And so as I look at the topic of mitigating risk, and I do this in my own business, I do it in my own life. You know, what are the questions I need to be asking? What's the downside of what's happening? And potentially, if things are potentially afoot that may not be going the way I expect it, what am I going to do to try and take an active role to solving that problem? And a lot of times, you know, software and data can only get you so far. Sometimes it comes down to, let's all get together in a room. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a opportunity to you know, vent a little bit about what's going right, what's going wrong. And let's make sure that we're solving some of these problems so that there's no misunderstandings. There's no misgivings. Everybody feels like they have an opportunity to contribute something. Uh, you know, their perspective, what they're seeing, what they're doing. And when you do that, right, at the end of the day, you're going to have a much more um, cohesive project team. You're going to have people that now can understand that, hey, when there's an issue, I need to raise my hand. When you see something, say something. And at the end of the day, it also shows as an owner that you're engaged, you're informed, and you're holding those folks accountable. Because you're a, so much more than just writing the big check for the new elementary school or the new hospital or the new, you know, the new convenience store. The commitment there is you want it done and you want it done right. And you've got to try and uh, ensure that everybody shows up to do the job that they're being paid to do the best job that they can. And if there are issues or challenges, try to get those uncovered, identified and solved before they become big issues and cause conflict in the schedule or in the, the overall budget, right? So I look at these things from a much bigger perspective. And when I really look at mitigating risk, one of the key factors is, do I have the information in the data to ask the right questions? And then asking myself the question, what questions should I be asking that I'm not asking? Or what do I need to know that I don't know right now? Those two questions alone, just in any situation, open up a really unique uh, perspective and a dialogue and gets you better prepared to have these conversations with your stakeholder teams. And I also think it helps sort of assert yourself so that you say, hey, look, I am, uh, I love you guys. I think everybody's doing a phenomenal job. However, I'm not leaving it to chance. And I am going to, uh, you know, take an assertive role here to ask the questions that I think I need to ask because I'm the one writing the check. 
I do say that um, when I talk to you know, about mitigating risk to a lot of owners, they kind of look at me a little cross-eyed and like, well, what do you mean? Like, you know, don't I just write the check and the building gets built? No. Yeah. I mean, yes, but no, right? <laughs> at the end of the day, um, it's a lot more involved and engaged process than that. And what I would tell you is if you're an owner is like, Oh, I, Steve, I don't want to be involved in that stuff. Well, I would highly recommend you still are from a top level perspective, but then you go out and you find an owner's rep or you hire an internal project manager that can be your eyes and ears on the project. And they are the ones that are paid to be the quarterback out there, making sure that all the key plays are being executed exactly as necessary, uh, done within the time limits that we've set and making sure that we're delivering that project on budget. And they become your, um, you know, Drew Breeses or your Tom Brady's or, you know, quarterback that's my personal favorite, Dak Prescott, who's going to deliver and he's going to win a Super Bowl this year. Uh, mark my words, probably just lost all credibility there, but we're big cowboy fans here anyway. At the end of the day, you kind of need that. If you're not going to play that active you know, role as the owner, you need somebody that's got that experience to help you feel confident. And especially if you are a repeat builder and you're going to build multiple projects, getting engaged, uh, you know, shouldering up with a project, you know, manager, an owner's rep uh, or a team of owner's reps that can sort of show you the playbook and help you understand how things unfold is a big factor in mitigating any future risk that you might have on a project. So I know I covered a lot here and I don't want to go on and on. Mainly I wanted to uh, utilize this as an opportunity to come back, say hello. Thank you for utilizing owner insight as at least an information resource. If your teams happen to be using us, thank you. We are so grateful, so appreciative of the fact that uh, we get the opportunity to serve so many great teams uh, every day. It's an honor and it's a commitment that we, we do not take lightly. And so I want you to know that. And if you're not using us, you're like, ah, that guy sounds like somebody I probably don't want to talk to, but maybe his team is awesome. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, my team is way more awesome than me. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. I'm not always this hyped up. Uh, it could be the amount of caffeine. I don't know. At the end of the day, uh, I would say that my rock star team at Owner Insight would love to have a conversation with you. Love to share why we're so dang passionate about what we do for us and, um, you know, really for, you know, sort of our mandate is we're not a software company. We're a partnership company. We're helping you deliver the result you're looking for, whatever it is that you're building uh, in commercial construction. And for us, it's, it, this is, you know, you're not a user. You're not just a customer or a client. You are our partner and you are our stakeholders and we're committed to, uh, you know, delivering the best possible outcomes for you. And we know we have the tools and the resources to make it simple to understand, simple to do for the team uh, and, and a better, quite honestly, a better platform and an approach than most of our competitors out there. I know that's a bold statement to make, uh, but it's one that I feel 100% committed to saying. Um, so definitely check us out. But even if you're not necessarily in that mode or you're not looking or whatever, but these things are of interest to you. Go to owner-insight.com and check us out. Check under the resources. We got so many tools and things that we do. Just look at a, our list under resources. You'll be like, man, these guys are doing a lot of cool stuff and they're doing it for free. We're doing it for free because we're that passionate about this industry and making a difference. For us, it's about creating a positive ripple effect. No matter where you are or what you're doing, if we can make a difference in some small way, to help you deliver your project a little more efficiently or find a little bit of knowledge that you can apply or you just ask some better questions going forward. That's what we do and why we do it. So uh, that's my story. And, you know, I'm going to end today's episode by saying we really appreciate your listening to this podcast. We appreciate the support that you guys have provided. If you know anybody in the construction industry that you feel could benefit from anything that I've said today or any of the resources that we offer at the website, I would greatly appreciate it if you would forward this on to them and just say, hey, give them a shot. Look at what they're doing and recognize that they're trying to make a difference here for this industry, trying to do some things that are a little bit side, outside the box and uh, they're doing it pretty well. All right. So um, again, I appreciate you guys listening to this podcast. If you've got... Um, ideas or suggestions, things that you'd like us to tackle in a future episode, 
Yeah, why don't you let me know? Uh, my personal email is steve at owner hyphen insight. Again, that's spelled I-N-S-I-T-E dot com. For those of you that maybe haven't been on our site before, uh, shoot me an email and just say, hey, look, I'm listening to the podcast. Either, you know, you, you talk too much or, you know, here's a topic I, I think you guys should cover or here's someone in the industry that I think you should highlight, whether it be, you know, for our women in construction series or someone that's just out there as passionate and committed as we are. We'd love to hear about them and we'd love to reach out to them, and maybe have them on as a guest. So uh, that's, that's my plug there. So you guys, thank you so much for this, um, you know, for, for your time and for your attention. And we'll be back again with another powerful podcast episode very soon until then y'all take care. Mm-hmm.